Hey everybody, welcome aboard. Today, I'm going to put together uh, what a friend of mine calls a DigiPod. We're going to take a Raspberry Pi, add a UDRC digital radio controller, put it in a case, set up a connection for power, and put this thing on the air. We'll run FL Digi on the VHF bands. So, join me now, we'll start the project. Check my YouTube channel for a high-speed version of this build. Let's switch over to my workbench camera and I'll show you the parts that we're going to use for this project. Well, first of all, we're going to need a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. It's just arrived. The Raspberry Pi is a Linux computer. It's the heart of this project. To that, we're going to add the UDRC. It's a universal digital radio controller. It will function as a sound card, but it will also control the push to talk on our radio. Uh, we'll plug a cable, which I have here. This is a standard um, six pin mini din cable. It will plug into the UDRC and into the back of my transceiver. I've got a 16 gigabyte memory card and then finally I've got a plastic case uh, which we will assemble. This is a laser cut case. It's one I designed and I make them for uh, Northwest Digital Radio. You can get the same case from them. It's got protective backing on it. I'll take some time and remove all of this paper. And uh, there's directions that come with it right here that show you exactly how it goes together. They're easy to follow and a lot of them have been built. Those are the parts. Let's get ready to put this together. Perhaps the most tedious part of this project is removing the protective paper from this acrylic. Uh, but it's worth it to take the time to do it. Just get under a corner. And pull everything off. I got a waste paper basket right under the bench here. We'll do the X corner. We've got a nice acrylic uh, case piece here. I like this particular acrylic because it looks like glass. It's okay, I will go ahead and stop the camera, get the rest of this ready to go, and come back and continue. All right, then. I've finished uh, peeling the paper off of the case parts. I, I didn't bother to peel the paper off of these two parts. These come together to form a little key like this that uh, is used so that you can stack multiple cases on top of each other. We won't be needing those. Now, uh, before we start putting the case together, I want to um, talk about how we're going to power this project. And there's a way for us to add uh, a connector right to the case itself. Let's take a look at that. A couple of parts that I forgot to mention at the intro to this video are these uh, JST connectors here. We've got a simple little uh, power connector. It's called a JST connector. It snaps together. Simple little thing. And then I've got a barrel jack, which is a standard jack that uh, a lot of your wall warts will plug right into. Now, there's a couple ways we could go about putting power to the UDRC. You can use the little um, mini USB uh, jacks right right here on the board and then you have to have a, oh, a wall word or something that will plug in there and deliver five volts but it needs to be able to put out a couple amps you might be able to get by with 1.5 amps but you definitely need to um, read the the bottom of the wall ward and make sure that it will deliver the current that's going to be needed to run both the Raspberry Pi and the UDRC. The method I prefer is powering the UDRC. 
when Brian Hoyer designed this, he put a buck converter um, power supply on this uh, board. So it's capable of taking an input voltage of anywhere from, say, uh, 8 or 9 volts DC up to almost 15 volts DC. It will regulate that down to a good solid 5 volts and it will provide the current, all the current, that you need to run the UDRC, the Raspberry Pi, if you ch choose to hook up a, a small monitor like a touch screen to the board as well, it'll even power that. So that's the technique that um, that I prefer to use. There are uh, two ways to get the voltage into this board. One is through this uh, DB15 connector right here. Another way though is to uh, come in through these two, the through holes right here will, uh, one is ground and one is 12 volts right there. Now in the original board it was just simple. We just took the JST, put it in there, and soldered it down. When Brian came out with the UDRC2, he added a component right there, which gets in the way of the socket for the JST connector. And I have a video out, maybe you've seen it, where um, I, <laughs> I take a knife and whittle this thing to get it to fit in there. In this video, I'm going to show you another thing that I found that I could do, a much simpler approach to getting this component onto the board where we need it, where there's other components in the way. You see this here? This is uh, one of these little breakaway header pin assemblies. <laughs> they come with 40 pins when I get them, and you can just snap off any number of pins that you might need for a project. And I'm going to use two of them for this project. So I'll just uh, break them off there. When you're breaking off more than two, you just take them between your fingernails and break. But when you're trying to get a small one off like this with only two leads on it, um, an extra tool makes it, makes it easier to hook up. So the plan is that I'm going to take the pins that are inside the JST connector here that uh, are a little shorter and I'm going to remove them. I'm going to take them out of here and I'm going to replace them with these two pins and this little spacer that's here will hold the connector up high enough that it will clear the component that's it's the wrong board, that it will clear the component that's in the way down here. So we'll just um, grab a hold of these guys. They're, they're tight, but they will come out. Might take a few tries. That's one. Nope, almost. There's two. We'll just throw those away and we'll put this guy back in in its place. Just set it down there, stick them in and so we've replaced the pins and this will now fit right in here on our board. So the next thing is to make sure that we've got the polarity right that we know which one is going to be positive and which one is going to be ground. I've got a little cheat sheet here that I did up that reminds me that the ground is closest to the blue uh, DB15 connector. So that means that when I put this in, the, the black lead needs to be closest to that blue connector. It's going to go like that. So the notch on the JST will be on the same side as the notch in the UDRC PC board. So let's uh, let's just solder those in. I think I'll put a little tape on there just to 
hold it in place so that I can turn it over and solder those pins. I'm going to solder just one pin right now. And that will hold everything in place. Uh, check that everything is down the way I want it. It looks really good. Now I'll solder the other one. Okay, that sets us up for our connector here. It's going to go right in there. Now the other thing that we need to do is to solder the other end of these leads to our wires here. And the wires don't need to be this long. There's a lot of extra wire there. I think we'll cut it off at about oh, two and a half, three inches. Save these for another project. And I will strip these. them up a little bit. We'll tin those guys as well. Now I need to solder those to these lugs on this jack and to make that job easy I'm going to go ahead and mount this in the case, kind of build a little assembly so that I can have an extra set of hands to hold it. So it's going to go solder it without the washer f this time because we haven't we're not putting the case together yet okay now the uh, we just need one of the ends to to help hold that up um, just take now that we've got our connector attached to the side of the case let's solder the leads to it you'll notice that we have three lugs here the the hot one, the one that's going to have the positive voltage on it, is the shortest lug of them all, and it's connected to the very center connector there. Then there's a medium size one next to it. That's where we're going to hook up our ground. And then there's a third one, which we're not going to use. And that's the, the black lead is ground. It's going to go into the middle um, lug here. Just like so. And we'll solder that right there in place. Now we'll do the the red one, which will be our our plus voltage. The way I like to to do this is, is we'll be able to put um, a full 12 volts on this circuit. And I like to do it so that the the power is coming right from the same connection that's going to the to the radio. So we have 12 volts hooked up to the radio. We can, when you turn the power supply on to run the radio, you're also turning your Raspberry Pi on here. Get some solder in here. Okay, now we have a connection there just the way we want it. Um, we'll put this together here. Just like that. And then to make sure that we've done it right, I'll bring in my meter. 
We'll set it up so that we can measure continuity when I put these terminals together and the probes go together we get a tone and I'll put one here on ground here and I'll come over and check it out here. I'm also putting it on the red side and yeah you hear a beep but it's not continuous and that's because of the, all the circuitry that's in there. So that's a good connection. Everything is the way we wanted it. When you order your UDRC it comes with a little packet and inside it you will find two standoffs and two nuts and we're going to use those to provide a couple of legs or feet if you will to help hold the UDRC in place. They're going to go um, on the opposite side of the board from the uh, double female header side here. This will be held to the Raspberry Pi firmly by all the pins when we put it together. But we don't want the other side to flop around. What we'll do is we'll add these standoffs here to fill in that distance right there. And that's simple enough to do. We just put a standoff in place here, put a nut on the other side of it, and just twist it on. It'll just go right on. And you can just put it on finger tight. It doesn't require any tools. We'll do the same thing with this side. Right here. There. Now we're ready to put these together. Uh, it may be a little tight because it's the first time they're going together but line up all the pins. There's 40 pins here that need to be lined up and then just sandwich them together and it ends up like this. Now if you decide at some point in time you need to remove this it's really easy to get this off. All you have to do is start rocking um, this board back and forth you don't have to move very far, just a gentle rocking. And you can look in here, it is slowly walking itself off of those pins. And just, just rock it and it comes apart. You don't have to yank on it, you don't have to pull or gyrate or anything like that. You don't need to pry and you don't want to twist it and bend those pins. You just rock it back and forth gently and it will walk off the board that's how you get them off. Okay, now let's put the case together. We'll unplug our little JST and we'll start by adding the bottom of the case. The bottom of the case has a notch for the micro uh, USB card that goes in there and there are two tabs here on this side, a short one and a long one, so this only goes in one way goes in just like that. Now we'll add our Raspberry Pi and the UDRC combined. We'll hold that together there and we'll put the the other side of the case on. There's a, a notch here right here that, that we want to match up with the one on the other side. You'll see how they they form somewhat of a symmetrical uh, shape here. I'll get this uh, out of the way. I might as well just plug it in right now. And then we'll take the USB end of the case and it's going to go right in here on this side. Now you might have to kind of lift up the the board but it snaps into place like that. It's obvious how that goes. Ladies down out of the way and now the top goes on and the, the top has two tabs on the end. One is narrow and one is wider and there are slots that they're going to go into. One is narrow and one is wider so you can see which way it goes. It drops right in here like this and then it'll slide in. There's a slot in the end for the top to slide into to hold it in place and finally we put 
the other end on. Now this is pretty much symmetrical so that uh, it'll go in right into this place right here. We'll put these in. The T section is set up so that it will bend slightly as it goes in and then these two little nipples will snap into holes there and the whole thing is locked together firm and solid no screws no glue we have a nice solid little case for our digi pie you'll find lots of places on the internet where they talk about how to get an image onto your SD card to put into a Raspberry Pi and you can follow whichever ones that you find convenient. Personally I've found that the instructions that you find on the Adafruit website are real easy to follow and usually pretty accurate and up to date. What I'm going to do here though is is way simpler because I already have one of these that's working so instead of going through all the process of trying to configure a Linux computer on a Raspberry Pi I'm simply going to clone the image that I already have right here in this Raspberry Pi here so uh, I well, got a brand new memory card here I'll get a pair of scissors and I will just cut up the edge of the card like that We'll go through the side here and pull out the uh, little plastic holder. There is an adapter here, which is handy if you need to put this little card in a larger slot. Uh, I don't need to do that, so I'm not going to bother. Just drop out that card. And then I have this little plug-in card reader, and it will take the mini SD card right here in that slot. We'll pull the end off of this. I'll bring my Raspberry Pi over here and I will just insert this right in there. We should see it come up on our screen. Let me clean up this window a little bit. Uh, we'll just get our FL Digi program out of the way here. Um, this is a little net control manager script that I wrote and I'm just going to cancel this window. We're going to go into the Raspberry Pi menu into the accessories here and I'm going to bring up the SD card copier and then I'm used to doing this. I, I recognize the name of the card that I have in my Raspberry Pi right now and then this uh, generic mass storage is the little chip that I just put in so we're ready to just start copying. Um, I'm going to say yes. We're going to go ahead and do this. And it will start to uh, do this process here. It's a two-part process. The first part goes fairly quickly. Um, and so we will let it start copying the partition, get that ready. And now it's starting uh, number two here, the second stage. This will take quite a bit of time here. You can see up here that I have uh, the time here in the corner at 1748. This will probably take, oh, probably at least 15 minutes. So I will stop the recording and we'll come back and join you again when it's done. Okay, it says now that the copying is complete. I'll just say okay to that. We can close this window here. So now test everything out. We've cloned our card. Let's see how it works. I'll start by shutting down the Raspberry Pi. Now that the Raspberry Pi is shut down, we'll start moving some parts around. We've got a USB mouse that'll plug in there. This is a wireless keyboard. We'll put that one right in there. Here's my Ethernet connection. Then on this side over here, we have our HDMI plug. And finally, we'll take the cable that goes to the radio. There we go. Okay, let's hook up some power and see how it works. I've got this little power pack that I like to use. It'll put out 12 volts. It'll put out 9 volts or 5 volts, but 
I'm going to hook it up with 12 volts here. We'll set this down. We'll plug the other end in here. And then all I have to do is flip this switch and the Raspberry Pi should come on. Okay, we'll just get rid of this little warning that's right here. I'm going to go over into the ham radio menu. I'll bring up FL Digi. It comes up on the screen. Let's turn the monitor window on. Adjust it a little bit there. Let's uh, put it on the air. Give it a try. I'll ping W7BPD goes out on the air. And we get an act back. We're up and running. So we've got our DigiPi built. We've got the image on the card. We've had the station on the air. Now that this is done and you've seen the video, I know I'm going to get a lot of requests. Can we get a copy of the image? Where can we download that image? Well, at this point in time, I don't know exactly where it's going to be. The image that I'm using right here is not quite ready. Uh, there's a group of us that are tweaking it a little bit. There's a few changes that we want to make some improvements and then we will definitely make it available but I can tell you this if you just go to WB7FHC.com and look for the DigiPi link you'll find the latest information about the progress that we're making on this project and as soon as we have an image ready to distribute there will be information there on where you can find it thank you for watching and hey don't forget to subscribe like and share